In this tutorial, I'll be going over the very basics of geometry nodes to create this customizable diamond ore, and as a bonus, stick around to the end of the video to see how to create custom controls for your very own geometry nodes. To get started, we need to open up the geometry nodes panel. You can do that by clicking Shift F3 or clicking it down here where your timeline is, and then scrolling this back up. Once we have that, you're going to click on your cube, and then you're going to click New. This will open up a new geometry node. We have a group input and we have a group output. Whatever is in the group output is going to be showed. So you can think about this input as the literal mesh that we have here. Like if I make a mesh and then disconnect this, oh, it's gone. Like this group input is basically whatever you have modeled here. I'm just going to undo those things. So the first node we're going to add by clicking Shift A is an icosphere. An icosphere is one of those basic meshes that you have. You can find it just as easily by Shift A outside in your viewport and clicking it here. And if we drag this into the group output, you see that it changes. Uh, if we want to join these two things together, you can have a join geometry node. And the way that I just searched that is actually Shift A and then clicked on the search box and you can type in join geometry there. It's an easier way than looking through all these menus because there are a lot. If you put this join geometry right in the middle and then attach the group input again, you can actually see that both of these things are in here. And that's going to be pretty important later. Um, right now, I'm going to disconnect the icosphere and I'm going to use my first node, which is distribute points on faces. It's basically going to do it exactly what it sounds like. It's going to distribute points on the group input because that is the mesh that we have right here. To see the the square again, or the, it's not a square, it's a cube. To see this cube again, I'm going to put that into the join geometry, and now you can see all these little points. If we increase the density, um, it becomes more dense with points, and next what we're going to do is we're gonna instance these points, because right now these are not really geometry. They're basically just like placeholder points. And if we wanna make them geometry, we have to get a node called instance on points and then plug that in right after the distribute. When we do that, we see that nothing is happening. It's because we need to make these points an actual mesh. So we're gonna take that icosphere that we're using at our diamonds and then plugging that in. Those look a little bit too big. So I'm going to turn down the radius right here. Um, actually, I'm gonna keep that in one, but I'm gonna change the scale. So when you have an instance on points nodes, when you change one of these, you can see all of the points scale. If you hold left click and drag downward, you can select all of them at the same time so you can have a little bit more control. I'm gonna turn those to like 0.1 and we can mess around with that however necessary. One thing that I'm noticing is the points are all facing the same direction. You can easily fix that by adding a random value node and then connecting the random value to the rotation there. Now, some of them have different rotations. It looks a little bit better, and you can increase this max, and that'll just give more variation depending on the look that you are going for. The next thing that we're gonna do is distribute the points only on specific parts of the mesh. Right now, the points are covering everything, and we don't quite want it to look like that. To do so, we are going to get a noise texture, and we are also going to get a color ramp. Now, if you plug the noise texture into the scale, um, if something happened. I'm not entirely sure what happened, though. It looks like these, these points are a little bit too big to see. So I'm going to put this color ramp in, and then I'm going to drag the black value until we can start seeing a little bit more, just about like right there. Um, if you don't understand what's happening, uh, I have this other cube here. Um, that if I go into the material preview, this is basically that noise texture that we were talking about before. This is just a noise texture connected to a color ramp. You can think of the color ramp as values between zero and one. So the value of black is zero and the value of white is one. If we turn the black value up, you can see that the contrast is changing. And this is why in our a cube down here, there are now smaller icospheres that are small because they have a higher value in the white direction. So I'm going to hide this cube again and go back to geometry nodes. It still seems like these are pretty random, so I'm going to turn the scale down 
uh, just to find that place where you can see the most difference in values and the best clumping. Maybe that's going to be around value 1. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Um, they're still a little bit too big, so I'm also going to squish down this white. Actually, the white makes it bigger. So what happens if I squish this down? So right now we're facing an issue that these icospheres are way too big. To make these icospheres just a bit smaller, we're going to add a math node and then set this math node to multiply. If you combine these, you are multiplying a value 1. If you have a value of 1, it's the same thing. And if you shrink this down, let's say a value of like 0.17, you can see that these are much smaller and you can definitely see the differences um, between some of these icospheres now. We're going to find what looks good for me. I'm going to turn the detail up and I'm actually going to turn the density to 200. That's looking really decent right now. Um, if this is your desired look, then we can keep that or you can mess around with any of these values there's a lot you can do with all this stuff if you turn the roughness down you get these bigger chunks so if that's what you're looking for totally go for it and that concludes the first part of this video um, thanks for everybody who stuck around to get to the second part this is going to be about texturing and about creating those very special group inputs um, that'll make it like super easy to customize the only thing I've done since last half was to add this background in and to add some lighting. So, um, the first thing I'm going to do is grab your cube and add two materials. I'm going to add one material called rock and I'm going to add another material called diamond. And uh, if I change this diamond color right here, um, we're seeing nothing is really happening. That's because in your geometry nodes, you need to add the materials in the node network by getting a set material so i'm going to add one set material right here and i'm going to add one set material in between here um, i can tell since this is my group input that this is going to be my rock and then for this one this is my diamond so i'm going to add them there and you can see it's working as intended um, I'm going to actually turn this to the shader editor now. This is not a shading tutorial, so I'm going to brush by this a little bit quickly. Uh, transmission all the way up, and I'm going to turn roughness um, just a little bit, like a 0.1 roughness. Uh, I'm now going to change my IOR to kind of the look I want. Technically, diamonds have an IOR of 1.45 around that. I actually think it looks a little bit better if I go under 1, like... Give it that stylized look at like the 1.1.3, 1 .1 maybe 1.7 or 8. I think that looks a little bit better for me. But this is however you want it to look. Next, we are going to be making our rock texture. Uh, so go into the rock material over here. And we're going to start off by adding a color ramp um, like we did before. And a Voronoi texture. This Voronoi texture gives like this little kind of blocked out effect, especially if you go to distance to edge. Um, you can see it accentuated here. Uh, if I plug the Voynor into the color ramp, and then I plug the color ramp into the base texture, we can start to change the colors that we see. So this is a little bit dark for my liking. I'm going to turn this a little bit up. And I don't want this to be completely white, so I'll turn this a little bit down. Um, Increase the randomness just a bit because in Minecraft you kind of have these block this block look and you don't want them super super random uh, or you also don't want them super super square. I think there's a little something in the middle, maybe like a 520 with a scale of let's go with a scale of seven. Um, it's looking pretty good, maybe a little bit light. So let's actually get a bump node and then plug the bump node into the normal. And then connect this color ramp to the height. Oh, and look, now it's a lot more detailed and you can see a little bit of that bump here. Um, we're also going to change the roughness because that's like a really shiny rock. And we're actually going to invert this because right now we're working with a lot of light colors. I'm going to invert it just because um, we want everything to be a little bit darker. So it's just going to flip these values. Um, and I think, I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe you can tweak around with these however you feel. I'm going to maybe increase the darkness just a little bit. Um, but I'm really liking where this is coming. Uh, so, but I'm really liking where this is going. 
Um, if you have the Node Wrangler enabled, go Control T, and then you add this mapping and texture coordinates. If you don't have them, you can download it or just get the nodes from the uh, Shift A menu. Turn this to Object, um, and now it's that's kind of the look I'm going for. This tutorial is basically done. If you've made it this far into the video, I just want to say congratulations for completing this. Um, this next part is going to be a little bit advanced, and I'm going to brush through it. It's going to be part of the geometry nodes, just getting a really cool edited modifier stack. And doing that is pretty simple. All you got to do is select one of the t uh, empty tabs from your group input, and then put them into first the density. And when you do that, you can see in this modifier, you can change the density up and down depending on your look. So if I only want 50, there it is, only 50. And doing that, you don't have to go into your geometry nodes to change every single aspect of your diamond ore. We're going to do this for a couple of them. Like, I also want the icosphere radius to be on here. So now you can make them bigger or smaller depending on the look you want just from in here. So I'm going to change this to, let's say, 20. But I'm going to bring the radius up a little bit. Uh, and you can kind of see how you can get different effects from just adding to your group input. Another semi-advanced tip is if you get a value node and then you type in hashtag frame, this will show the frame that you are at by slowly iterating over a certain number. So if I plug that in, if I turn this to 4D and then I plug this into the W, you can actually see it start to move and animate. This is going extremely fast, so I'm actually going to divide this by, let's say, 50, so it'll go a little bit slower. This is also a really cool way to animate things. So you might ask yourself, how do you, how do you turn this off? How do you put geometry nodes to this? And you can do that by getting a mix RGB, plugging it into the W, turning the factor actually I think it's right here is the one you want correct you turn the factor here and then you add another node into the factor so you can turn this factor on or off depending if you want to see animation or not um, another way that you can change the name because this one right now says factor and we wanted to say like animation on is you click N and then go to the group inputs uh, this one says factor right here. If you double click, you can say animation. So you can say animation on or off with the radius. I'm just going to call that size. And with density, I'm I'm going to keep it to density, but I'm going to make it in bold because I can. Um, and there you have it. You have an editable diamond ore texture. Um, that's about all I wanted to show in this video, so if you found it interesting, I would love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if that's too much of a commitment, I would really like you to follow my Instagram or TikTok page. Links are in the description. Um, so thank you so much for getting to the end of this video, and I will see you in the next.